Now, if you're interested in machine learning, you may have heard the term text embedding or a text embed model. You can find them, for example, on the uh, Olama website. Uh, and you might wonder, well, what are they? How are these different to generative AI models? Well, today I want to talk about text embedding, what it does, how it works, and just the amazing things you can do with it. I've got some demos that I've written uh, to show you the practical use of it. So text embedding, that's what we're trying to find out about today. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's jump into this, the magic of text embedding, turning text into numbers. Now, uh, let's take two sentences. The cat sat on the mat and the boy jumped on the bed. Now, the question that we ask ourselves is, are these two sentences related? And your initial thought will be, no, they're not related. One is about a cat sitting on a mat. The other is about a boy <laughs> jumping on a bed. Uh, there's no commonality. One's got a cat in it, the other's got a boy in it. There's no furniture the same. One's a mat, one's a bed, one's sitting, the action, the other's jumping. So there seems to be no similarity between these two at all. However, there is another way of analysing the sentence, and that's to look at more uh, the context of the sentence. So, for example, both of these are probably happening indoors. That's a high chance of that happening. Both are about living creatures rather than about uh, just objects, rocks or furniture or whatever. And they're both doing something. So there are similarities between them that are not necessarily about the actual actor in the sentence or the object and so on. Now embeddings capture the semantic meaning of data objects, in this case text. You can also do it on images and on audio and represents them in an array of vectors, an array of numbers. So for example, the cat set on the map might release 0 0.912, 0 0.89 and so on, five different uh, things there. And the boy jumped on the bed, a different set of numbers, 0 0.112 and so on. Now, what do these numbers mean? I mean, we can line them up here. Some of them we can see are identical. Some of them are similar. And some of them are, well, completely opposite, really, in terms of their values. So let's say we assigned these values to it, whether it involves animals, whether it happens indoors, whether it involves humans, whether it involves something living, whether it happens outdoors. So you can see that the cat sat on the mat has a high rated between zero and one. This is, has a high index that there's animals involved. Uh, it happens indoors lightly, not necessarily, but lightly. No humans involved living creatures involved doesn't happen outdoors but the boy jumped on the bed well that's got no animals in it, it does happen indoors uh, it's got humans in it it's got living creatures in it but doesn't happen outdoors so you can see now that we can rank the context the semantics of this sentence in more ways than just looking at the actual words and if we added a third sentence the dog sat on the grass and you can see it would have a similar set of rankings uh, you know, it's got animals in it rather than humans and, and so on and so on. But now it's happening outdoors, 0 0.89 chance, because it's probably not any grass indoors, although there could be in some weird situation in, a, in an open space in an office or something, you know, an atrium or something. But uh, really, uh, that's the numbers you get. Now that you have text that's been converted into vectors, you can search now based on semantics, not based on words. And this is the key thing. So you can say you're looking for something and you, uh, let's say you say, uh, you know, I'm looking for something uh, uh, that's similar to the kangaroo jumped on the bed. It can now do a search to look at those different attributes, indoors, outdoors, who's involved, animals, humans, and so on, and find you results from the database that are similar to what you've already got in there. So you're no longer looking at just the words, you're looking at these vectors that are created by the embeddings, and then you can find similar things. And this is incredibly powerful because now you're looking at the semantics. It's a semantic search and not just a literal search. If you go to a search engine, you type in the word kangaroo, you're expecting it to bring up things that have got the word kangaroo in it. But when you're doing a semantic search, well, really, you mean an animal or something that jumps or and you can start to define different characteristics about those things. Now, in reality, the meaning of each of those numbers and the weight given to it is not 
assigned by humans. There are machine learning algorithms that are able to analyze text and come up with a whole bunch of vectors for them. In fact, the uh, an example, the All Mini LM L6V2 is a sentence transformer model that maps sentences and paragraphs to 384 different uh, things in vector as vectors, like uh, three dimensional dense vector space. So it's 384 numbers based around the particular thing you're analyzing because we were just dealing with what, five there which we kind of really tried to scratch our head to come up with five things you know 384 so it really does look at the nuance of any piece of text whether that's a paragraph a sentence a headline a blog post an article a news article you know instructions whatever you can get this to to classify it with these 384 different parameters that look at it and then you can search for things that match closely to those same kind of patterns that you get across that vector database. Now, so in this first demo, I'm going to use Olama to generate the embedding. So you can use a model like Nomadic Embed Text. It's an open source embedding model with a large uh, context window. And then if you run this curl command, assuming you've got Olama running, you can actually take the text here, the sky is blue, and so on, and you can ask the model to come back and give you the embeddings. I'm just gonna show you that now, so you can see that you give it text and you get back this big long list of numbers. Okay, so here I am on a Linux machine. I've got Olama installed and running. I've got that Nomadic Embed Tech model uh, installed. I'm just gonna run curl, which will talk to the server on the local host. Uh, and we're not gonna get text back like we would if we were doing generative AI. What we're actually gonna get back, look at that, all those numbers, whole bunch of numbers. Those are the vectors, the vectors for that text, which is the sky is blue because of Riley scattering. Those are all the, the vectors that it comes back. Look at that, how it's classified that text using uh, that model. Now, once you have all these vectors, you need to store them in a database. And then of course, because they're in a database, you can search that database. And there are different types of databases. There are vector databases actually that are good at storing this kind of stuff. And in this video, I'm going to use a piece of software called Chroma. You can find that at trychroma.com. Chroma is an open source AI application database. It supports embeddings, vector search, document storage, full text search, meta filtering, multimodal, it's all in one place, open source. So this is a really good way that you can take these vectors, put it into the Chroma database and also search it. And, and there's so much more that it can do here. So what I did, I downloaded a data set of nearly half a million quotes from uh, Kaggle.com, it's free to download from there. And then using Python, because Chroma can access uh, by Python, and it's got other APIs you can use as well, other languages, like JavaScript and so on. So I'm using Python, and I take each quote, which I read from the uh, file that they give you from Kaggle.com, and I ask it to vectorize it and put it in the database. Now, Chroma uses the All Mini LM L6 V2 model by default. It's so simple because it downloads it and just runs it for you. You don't even do anything. This really is a, a kind of a turnkey solution. You can kind of go and get the Chrome and install it, follow the install instructions, and it just kind of works. And now adding in all those quotes took eight hours because it was doing it with just the CPU. There are different ways you can do it. You can use other models. You can use offline models. You can do this, but as a quick way, I wrote a quick Python script threw it in the database, let it run there, half a million quotes all got vectorized. And now I can search that database semantically. So that's what I'm gonna show you now as a demo using my query script. I'm gonna ask it some things and ask it for a quote to come back relative to the query that I give it. Okay, so here I am over on the machine where I built the database. I've got a Python script called quote uh, Q for query. And you run that and it asks you for a query string. So I'm just going to start by typing in blue sky. Now, as we can see here, we've got the quote here. It would appear that the blue sky is actually produced by solar wind and solar radiation, exciting air molecules to emit light, just like a neon lamp. And of course, it does con contain the word blue sky and, what, and next to each other. So that is what you'd find in a normal search. You would get a quote up about blue sky. But if I now run the script again and I say, I love looking up at the blue sky, what do I get? I get a different quote. It says, I look up in the sky. What do I see? Well, blue. So the first thing to notice here, blue sky doesn't appear as a phrase. 
So it's uh, blue sky. We've got sky and blue separately. But also, I love looking up is not in this sentence at all. I look up is there. So you can see that the context semantical search, the contextual search is that I look up at the sky and I love looking up at the blue sky are related to each other. They are a similar semantic uh, thing. And there's half a million quotes in there and it says, well, this quote has a similar kind of structure, a similar kind of semantics than the thing you've typed in. So I get this quote coming back. So absolutely brilliant. You wouldn't get that in just a word search, a text search. This is a semantical search. Let's try another. And I love this example. My aunt is 80. OK, now we get a, a reply here from George Tacky from uh, Star Trek. My grandmother lived to 104 years old and part of her success was she woke up every morning to a brand new day. She said every morning is a new gift. Her favourite hobby was collecting birthdays. Now, as you can see, my aunt is 80. It does not appear. The word aunt, the word uh, 80 does not appear anywhere in this. But semantically, we've got a family relation who has got to an older age. And here we've got a quote about a family relation who's got to an older age. And so you've got this quote here from George. OK, and it's about his grandmother who's 104. But my aunt is 80 is in the same semantical area. So brilliantly, it's found this search, this quote from my search, which is actually related to what I was looking for. OK, we do one more. Cheese is to be eaten at lunch. You know, there you go. How, what are you going to do about that? Well, here's a quote. I just don't see the point of not eating cheese. I mean, if God didn't want us to eat cheese, would he have let man invent it? So there's that quote for you. So here it is. Uh, it's about eating cheese. It's about liking to eat cheese. I've put in cheese is, is to be eaten. And obviously the word eaten does not appear in there. Eating is in there. Eat is in there. Lunch is not mentioned. Cheese is. So it's done a semantical search. It said, this is the closest thing I've got in my database that talks about the same thing as what you typed in your sentence. Absolutely amazing. And such a brilliant way of doing search. A much better way of doing search than just doing keyword matching. Okay, so there you go. The magic of text embedding semantic search is just brilliant such a clever clever thing and by using these machine learning models we can get those vectors and then you can do that searching really really clever love to know your thoughts on it is that something you've been using something you're interested in love to hear your stories please do let me know well that's it my name is gary sims this is gary explains i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up and if you like these kind of videos why not stick around by subscribing to the channel Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.